Hi, I'm Ann Campbell, and today I'm going to talk about the key features of SonarCube 10.2. Let's start with the rules. First, we've implemented 43 strict implementations of MISRA C++ 2023 rules. Now, in the past, we've always declined to do strict implementations of MISRA rules. We did rules that were derived from MISRA or related to MISRA, but these are strict implementations, and you'll recognize that when you're looking at the rule titles and rule descriptions. You can find these rules in the interface using the MISRA C++ 2023 tag, and when you look at them, you may notice that the rule keys are all starting with M23 underscore and then the MISRA rule number. So this will help you correlate between the MISRA documentation and the rules in the interface. We've also expanded secrets detection. Now, originally when we implemented secrets detection, it was one rule in Sonar Lint that was aimed at helping you prevent ever checking in a secret. Eventually, we expanded that to have that rule also in Sonar Cube, and now today we're adding 29 additional secret detection rules that detect 67 different secrets patterns. We've also started parsing the Kotlin DSL, and we've added five new rules to help you master its use. For JavaScript, we've added 11 new rules. For Python, we've added nine new rules. And in .NET, we've added nine new date time rules. We've also started parsing Azure Resource Manager and Bicep templates. We've got parsing and 19 new rules to help you use them well. But wait, there's more. For C++ and C, we now import Cobertura coverage reports. For Python, we import rough reports. For PHP and Python, we have improved cache handling, which means speed improvements for TAIN analysis rules. For PHP, we have advanced support for super global arrays. And in C Sharp, we've added support in constant tracking rules for C Sharp 9, C Sharp 10, and C Sharp 11. On the topic of, but wait, there's more, I want to talk about COBOL. That's not something I get to do very often. But I want to point out that this release for Sonar Cube will include a lot of fixes for Sonar COBOL. Most of those come because of one particular user in the community who stepped up to provide us some very specific, very detailed feedback. And because of that, we were able to make these significant improvements. So Joss, thank you. And now I want to return to the topic of C Sharp, because we've done a lot of work in the last few versions to replace the symbolic execution engine. We finished that replacement in 10.2, and that means a couple things. So you might see a marginal improvement in the speed of C Sharp analysis, but more importantly, we've improved the accuracy of the C Sharp analysis, and that allowed us to find new issues such as this one. So this is an issue in .NET and .NET Runtime, and we have an always true condition here. Now, this is in sqlmoney.cs, and I just want to show you what the implications of this are. So here we are in sharplab.io, where we're testing a rounding with SQL Money, first of a positive number and then of a negative number. And as you see, the positive number is rounded as expected from 2.6 to 3. And the negative number is rounded as expected from 2.6 to negative, wait a minute, that's not what's expected, is it? It should be rounding to negative 3. But that always true condition means that it's not rounded correctly for negative numbers. Yes, we have submitted a bug report for this. And now I want to talk a little bit about Sonar Lint. I've got two things to tell you. First, we've added documentation to the documentation site for Sonar Lint. So you'll find it here in the drop down, just change from Sonar Cube to Sonar Lint. And we've got documentation for each individual flavor of Sonar Lint. So it's much easier now. You've got one place to go to find out all the details. Of course, why am I talking about Sonar Lint in a Sonar Cube release announcement? Well, this is a nice segue for me to talk about something that it's a little bit harder to show, which is that in Sonar Lint, you can already mark an issue false positive in Sonar Lint, and it will be marked false positive on the server if you're in connected mode. But what about when you're writing new code and Sonar Lint raises an issue in your brand new code that doesn't appear yet on the server because your brand new code hasn't been analyzed, but you don't agree with it, or you think in this context it's okay and you're not going to fix it. So 
you would like to market false positive or won't fix, but previously you had to check in your code, wait for it to be committed, wait for it to be merged, then go to the server, if you remembered, to market false positive or won't fix. Well, now you can do that right away. You can market false positive or won't fix in SonarLint in anticipation of that new code's first analysis. And when it gets to SonarCube, it will already be marked false positive or won't fix because of the work you did ahead of time in SonarLint. I think that's pretty awesome. And now I'm going to jump into the interface to talk about the clean code taxonomy. So we've made some significant changes here, but this is really just a down payment on what's coming. So previously, we used to talk about bugs, vulnerabilities, and code smells. But we've been realizing that's too simple a picture. The reality of it is that any given issue in the source code can have multiple impacts in the compiled software. So some problems can cause both bugs, or the software doesn't act like you expect it, and also vulnerabilities or an opening for an attacker. And it used to be that we struggled sometimes in how to classify rules between maintainability, reliability, bugs, or vulnerabilities, security. So we took a step back, we did some deep thinking, and we said, okay, what's really the key here is the attributes of the code. Does the code display consistency? Does it display intentionality, adaptability, responsibility? And from any one of those attributes, consistency, intentionality, adaptability, that could have multiple impacts on the code. For instance, a buffer overflow rule might have impacts on both the reliability and the security of the code. So what we've done is reclassify most rules and the issues that come from them against the relevant clean code attributes. So now on both rules and issues, you're going to see a label for the attribute that that rule ties back to and the software qualities that can be impacted by violations of the rule that affect the attribute. There's a lot more to come on this topic, both in future releases, the other products, and other publications. So watch this space. And now, the Clean As You Code Quality Gate. In 9.9, .9, we added a warning on quality gates and the projects that use them when the quality gate included conditions above and beyond the Clean As You Code criteria. So here I have a quality gate that I've copied from our production instance. And you see, I've got this warning that I have extra conditions that are not recommended. And I have extra conditions both on new code and I've got some additional conditions on overall code. And I'm getting this warning both in the quality gate itself and on the project that uses it. We got feedback on that and we heard you. And so now we fixed it. So now here's the exact same quality gate that I copied from. This is 10.2 on our production instance. And I don't have that warning anymore, even though I still have the extra conditions both on new code and on overall code. And even better, the warning goes away on the projects that use the quality gate as well. Now, while we're in the project space, I want to poke around a little bit more. Last time I said that we had updated all parts of the project space for the new look and feel, but I was wrong. I missed a few spots. So now we've actually done that. We finished that up by updating the activity page, the security reports, project information tab, which is now its own page, and all the other pieces of the project space, as well as the list of projects. In 10.2, we expanded that to also sync project permissions. Let's move on to upgrades. We've gotten the feedback that some people put off upgrading SonarCube because the downtime represented by waiting for Elasticsearch indices to be rebuilt was just unacceptable in their context. So we've worked on that, and now we're looking at a freshly refreshed instance of SonarCube. And you see I have this yellow banner across the top. Reindexing is in progress, and yet I can see all of my projects. I can access my projects. I can get to the issues of my projects and do what I need to do with them. What we've done is restrict the limited functionality to only those things that actually really require Elasticsearch indices. So I can do most of the things I need to do. The only thing I really can't do is filter my issues. And now, last but not least, let's talk about GitLab. 
because in 10.2 we've added the ability to show security reports in GitLab. Here I am at the project level where I can see my issues and also in PRs where I can see the full details of the vulnerabilities in my project. That's all I've got for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.